Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux for Everyone, and welcome home. Today, I want to talk about the imminent, and by imminent, I mean basically right now, release of Fedora 33. An incredible release by all standards, in my opinion. I've been using it for a little while as the beta, and I'm very, very confident that it's going to be pretty much the, the peak, right, where Fedora goes from... Yeah, it's improving, it's improving, it's improving to boom, spiked up. It's amazing now. I have a lot of reasons for this. The first of which is that I think as a whole, they've focused very heavily now on providing the user with a solid and easy to use friendly user experience that previously I think was lacking a little bit. So... Everything from the installer being basically three steps compared to what it used to be. You just have time zone to worry about, your disk installation, you know, where you want it to go, and then your keyboard layout or your language. After that, you just install you just click install. Boom. Goes through, done. No setting up host names. No, none of that. No, no setting up your, your username or a password. None of that, not in the installer. And the reason for this is because that happens when you first boot into the operating system, because yes, they have focused on providing a solid first run experience with an initial setup dialog. And the reason this is super duper important is because Fedora not only comes shipped on hardware where you expect to open up your laptop and just set it up like that anyway, rather than having to reinstall your whole operating system, but also because if you'd like to give Fedora to a friend or install it for another person, you don't have to worry about creating a pseudo user, or not pseudo, but fake user, and then having them have to change it later by changing the password or changing the username. This is all just handled out of the box. You open it up, and the first thing you get is, Welcome to Fedora 33. And first and foremost, that first screen is really, really pretty. After you go through it, you don't just set up your user. You also get to set up your online accounts. You also get to set up your uh, privacy settings. If you want location services on or off, or you want automatic problem reporting on or off, and then you're off to the races. They've also given us the awesome introduction tutorial tour sort of thing uh, which by the way first and foremost looks beautiful and has a great animation from the start but gives you some tips right out of the box about what you can expect and how to use fedora so it'll show you little tips like the hot corner the notifications tray coming in from the clock the system tray over the on the right it also gives you tips about the software center and more and speaking about the software center the improvements to how updates are done make it an entirely new experience. In my opinion, makes it a great user-friendly experience in that you open up your software center and you just click update. You don't open the terminal. You don't do any of that. You click update. It will download the updates and then when it's ready, you just click restart. It will restart the system, apply the updates, and you are ready to go. No need to crack into a terminal, none of that. And that is critical because the reality of it is just because you can use a terminal doesn't mean everybody wants to. A lot of people really enjoy the benefits of a solid GUI that they can trust. The problem with relying on the terminal to do everything is that while yes, for many people, it gives them a sense of control, for other people, it reduces their confidence in their operating system. It's really great that this works the way that it does, and it's clear that they understand that this is an important improvement and an important addition to their operating system. Moving on from that, still in the software center though, I'd also like to point out that one of the other great things about this is that typically users will have to add third-party repositories in Fedora for things like RPM Fusion getting Steam or getting Chrome or getting their NVIDIA drivers. I think for a couple of releases now, um, you haven't had to do that, right? To get the software that you want, let's say you want Chrome, love it or hate it, most people use it, 
rather than having to open up a web browser to download another web browser, grabbing an RPM file off the internet and having to install it, you when you open up software, you get the option to enable third-party repositories. Once you do that, Chrome is available. You just search for Chrome in there, boom, install it. You're done. You have it. And that is critical for users being happy with the system they're using because they're not worried about repositories in the way that they previously were. They just worry about the software that they need, and that's all they should have to care about. It's very obvious to me that Fedora has put a lot of work over the past few years into refining this experience to the point where it is now. On top of that, this also applies to Steam. This also applies to the NVIDIA drivers. You can get them just like that. Now, Fedora 33 will also benefit from the improvements in GNOME, and GNOME 3.38, which is the newest release of GNOME, is what's shipping with Fedora 33. Alongside some changes to the app grid, which is now a little more compact, you can reorganize apps on the grid, put them in folders, rename folders, etc. Uh, you also have a lot of the performance improvements, and one of the reasons I think this particular release is so dang good is because out of every experience I've had with Fedora, this has by far been the absolute smoothest across the board. From updates to the first run to the performance of things like games and Wayland, which has been the default in Fedora for a while, the Wayland session in GNOME has become incredibly reliable in ways that Previously, it just wasn't. I can't actually remember the last time that I've had a GNOME crash on Wayland. What this shows to me is that from the very get-go, Fedora has been focused on laying the groundwork to deliver this to their users. And after all of this time, it's finally gotten to the point where it's worked out. It's actually happened. This, to me, shows that they have incredible foresight and they know exactly what they want to do and how to get there, even if it takes some time. So while Fedora may have been flying under the radar, not anymore. I really think that this is the release where they really pop their heads out and say, hey, look at me. I know exactly what to do. I can deliver an incredible, clean, crisp, and reliable user experience for everybody to enjoy, from the tech nerd to the developer to just the general user who doesn't want to care about all of the weird, wacky internals, but they want to have a stable, solid, reliable operating system. And now we made our video about BTRFS and why we think it's so important for Fedora 33 um, and for maybe even Linux as a whole, but it extends so far beyond that. It shows that through all of this, you know, the improvements in SE Linux not being such a bother anymore, it doesn't pop up and interrupt you all the time. They know how to deliver a solid user experience, and I really think that they've finally done that. And while there are a lot of great things going on in the Linux sphere right now, we just had a new Ubuntu release, we just had Pop OS drop their, their bomb, um, I think Fedora is going to stand up, you know, in the crowd a little taller than a lot of the others because they've come so far and this particular release is just super, super golden. So try out Fedora. I highly recommend it. it if you have tried it in the past and you weren't convinced, I think you'll definitely have a much better impression of it now than you ever had before. I'd like to go ahead and first and foremost say thank you to everybody who works on Fedora, everybody who works in, in FOSS, and everybody who works with Linux, and the community around it, the people who work on the blogs, the documentation, the translation. You guys are all part of something that makes this whole thing possible. So thank you all, because without the people behind these things, they wouldn't exist, and we wouldn't have anything to talk about, and that'd be no fun, would it? So thank you all for joining me on this wonderful, fantabulous Fedora adventure, and I highly recommend checking it out because it really, really is worth it. This is incredible.